Hey folks, this is David from Default Sound, and today I'm going to do a little continuation of a video that I just released last week that talked about how you can use Mainstage to achieve step or MIDI sequencing type effects using the built-in plugins, uh, a stack of a chord trigger plugin, an arpeggiator, and then another instance of the chord trigger MIDI effect, and then uh, you can even add another arp at the end if you want to get different effects. But uh, I had some, some people ask questions about pulling some extra functionality out of it, and I had a few more ideas that I kind of wanted to throw into the mix as well, so I thought I'd shoot a little follow-up video. So, uh, last time we kind of ended up with this. And I'm going to open up the plugins real quick so you can see what's going on. So I've got an instance of chord trigger on top that's triggering eight steps or eight notes from a single input note. You see we've got two octaves taken up here to give us the sequence. Then we have an arpeggiator on top after that playing eight notes. So that's just moving through all eight steps in the eighth note subdivision. And then lastly, we have another instance of the, of the chord trigger and it's taking each of those steps from the original chord trigger and it's assigning a different note output to them. So as we hold middle C, the first chord trigger is walking through all eight steps and the second chord trigger is determining what each of those eight steps output. So the first question I want to address is people ask me, well, could you change the pattern? Could you have the arpeggiator deliver held out notes and shorter notes and gaps in the, in the phrase and everything? And the answer is, is yes. So to, to achieve that, we've, we've got our eight steps in there just like before. We're going to go to grid mode and uh, I've drawn in a pattern here and you can see, so now this is going to walk through a 16 note or beat pattern with uh, an eighth note subdivision. So it now sounds like this. So the thing that uh, I did is I just clicked on grid mode here and I, I doubled up the length of the pattern so I would have uh, space to hold out notes or to leave gaps in the pattern. Uh, and then I just drew it in by clicking where I wanted things to be. Uh, right here I want to draw attention to this. This is a note hold. So you can see I just clicked on the note and then you drag it over as long as you want the note to hold out so you can hold out notes. Now the attack on this synth isn't very strong so now you can see how that holds out. So that's all you need to do if you want to have uh, sustained or, or lengthened notes in the pattern. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure that you have eight uh, eight notes in the pattern, no matter how many beats are in it, so that it repeats predictably. If I had only seven notes in the pattern, or if I had, you know, 15 notes in the pattern, then I wouldn't get predictable results because this is kicking it out eight, uh, eight beats, eight cycles, and then it's kind of going to start the notes over. So if you want predictable performance like a step sequencer, then keep uh, eight notes here for your rate, or if you had 16 notes for your rate, or 16 steps in your chord trigger, your first chord trigger, then you could do 16. Uh, but whatever your chord trigger is spitting out, if it's spitting out four notes in the sequence, then you'd want to keep four notes here, so on and so forth. The second thing I want to point out is people ask me about chords. If they wanted to throw some chord notes in there, they asked if they should do that in the arpeggiator plugin uh, by clicking you know, clicking the chord pattern here. The problem with that is that it's going to play every note from your original sequence, which does not sound good. So it's playing all eight, which sounds, sounds funky. That's not the effect we're going for. So if you'd like more than one note on any of these beats, do it in the second instance of chord trigger. So you can see here, If you want to add a, a polyphonic step to the sequence, just draw it in on whichever step you'd like it to be in the second chord trigger instance. So see here I've got two notes on B, which is the seventh step in my sequence that's tied to middle C. If I wanted to, I could add you know, notes to any of them. You can make all of them polyphonic if you want. That might sound kind of goofy, but... Sounds kind of like Super Mario's. Anyways, if 
uh, if you want to add uh, polyphonic notes to or steps to the sequence, just do that in the second instance of chord trigger, uh, not in the arpeggiator nor in the first. So the first chord trigger is just setting out the rules of the sequence. The arpeggiator is moving through it for you. It's setting the pattern. And the second chord trigger is determining the output. And then obviously you can play around with settings within your synth and within the arpeggiator to determine sort of the character of it. You could mess with note length. You could draw in velocity if you wanted. You know, and then you throw effects on it and it starts to sound like like you know what you're doing. Um, but you can mess with that there. The last thing I wanted to, to talk about is the latch settings. Uh, folks were, were wondering if you could just fire the sequence off and let it run. So right now I've got uh, latch mode set to add and I've got uh, my sustain pedal set to the latch destination. So when I hold my sustain, it's gonna hold that for me. But you could easily add a button to your layout uh, in your workspace and map it to the latch button so that you can just press it and it'll go. Now, if you wanna be able to move back and forth between different sequences and not have to, to repress this latch button, then set your mode to reset. And then when you change sequences, it'll just jump over to the new input and forget about the old input. Otherwise, they'll just run one right into the other uh, up to infinity. So if you wanna just latch it and have it go, then change your mode to reset, but you can definitely adjust that. If you don't want your sustain pedal to mess with latch, then just click MIDI controller, set the destination to none, and now your sustain pedal isn't going to affect your latch behavior. Uh, so that's some stuff you can do with this sort of step sequencing idea to add extra functionality. Like I talked about in the last video, things get really interesting if you add a second instance of the arpeggiator at the end of the chain. So you have chord trigger, arp, chord trigger, and arp. Especially if you get into polyphonic stuff, it's going to start to deliver interesting results because it's actually going to break that polyphony back up and add in extra subdivision, which can sound really cool. Uh, if you go to a, an interesting subdivision like dotted eighth. So it might not be as predictable, but it's gonna give you interesting results. And then you can change the octave range in that second plugin. And mess with some of those settings to just add uh, even more unique characters to the sequence if you'd like, if you're not looking for something exactly specific, but you just want some interesting textures. So. That's a little bit more about step sequencing. If you didn't see the last video, there's a link to the blog post with, with that video here in the description for this one. And you can actually download the patch that I created in that video at, the, at, the, at my blog over at defaultsound.com as well. So go check that out if you'd like. It's a pretty cool effect. And I'm still kind of learning more that you can achieve with it. Some interesting new things. So if I come up with anything else, I'll do a third follow-up video. Um, if you haven't already, head over to defaultsound.com and check out my main stage starter kit. It's worth over $150, but I'm giving it away to folks who use MainStage like you to help you take your MainStage and sound design game to the next level. Get some free patches, tips and tricks, a free ebook, a couple of helpful worksheets to make sure that you're setting yourself up to succeed in MainStage. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments or send me an email. And if this video is helpful to you, I hope that you'll subscribe, like, follow, share, comment, whatever platform you're on, do the appropriate thing. But that really helps me get the word out there and you'll see more videos like this one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.